my fellow Waddies, welcome to a new video. Today I'm about to go see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and then after I see it, I will be doing a review for the movie. Now if you want my full in-depth thoughts about the movie before going into it, then definitely watch my previous video, but I'll cover it briefly here. I'm pretty excited for this movie, not as excited as I was for the Batman, but still pretty excited. Speaking of which, does this movie have the potential to be better than the Batman and become my favorite movie of the year so far and then just probably go on to be my favorite movie of the year? I'm not sure. The Batman is my fifth favorite movie of all time. This one's gonna have to do a lot if it wants to beat it. But hey, you never know. Hearing a lot of good stuff about the movie, like how it's very different from other Marvel movies and how it's surprisingly brutal. Like, I'm hearing some people say that they wouldn't take their kids to go see it, which, as someone who grew up entirely on Mortal Kombat and horror movies, that is very exciting to hear. In fact, this movie itself is going to be a horror movie, which means gonna have to update that horror movie tier list that I did on my second channel. And it becomes all the more exciting when you realize that Sam Raimi is directing this movie. You know, the acclaimed director with such hits as Oz the Great and the Powerful. Oh, and also the Evil Dead trilogy and the original Spider-Man trilogy, but like those aren't as important. But I also have heard some mixed things like how the script is a bit messy or how it gets a bit campy at times just because of Sam Raimi's style. So I'm cautious but I'm optimistic and I have high hopes. So without further ado, let's go watch the movie. Oh, and by the way, make sure to watch till the end of the video. I have a surprise for you guys. All right, time to go. All right, I just got back from watching the movie and it was pretty good. Really, really weird but pretty good. Yeah, if you go into this movie thinking it's going to be a traditional Marvel movie, then you are in for a wild ride. This is definitely a Sam Raimi movie first. Like even I went into this thinking, oh, it's gonna be a Sam Raimi movie, but I just did not know how much of a Sam Raimi movie this was gonna be. This is the most Sam Raimi movie just ever. So I guess starting off, we should talk about the horror of the movie since that is the genre it's going for. Now, I have been the number one horror movie expert slash enthusiast ever since I was four years old. Thank you, Mortal Kombat. Here's me dressed up as Freddy Krueger in 2015 for Halloween. I also dressed up as Ghostface one year, but I don't know where any of the pictures are. So what is my opinion on Multiverse of Madness's horror? It's not very scary. Like, this isn't even a horror movie. Now, to be fair, this is coming from someone who's been desensitized to horror movies for a while now, but I can still acknowledge when horror in a movie is used well, when it's used effectively, and I'm just not sure it was used at all here. Like, this movie definitely tries to have horror. Like, there's this one scene that's pretty much like a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the scene in the ring where Sadaku comes out of the TV, but... It just doesn't really work for me. I guess we should compare it to the other superhero movie that came out this year with horror elements. You know, the one with the bats. Oh god, no, not that one, the other one. There you go. And personally, I think the Batman, the non-horror movie, did better with the horror than this horror movie. Now, that's probably just my preference showing through since the Batman has a much more grounded and realistic style of horror, while Doctor Strange is much more mystic and weird, like, I'd rather watch the first Halloween movie than, well, the third one. But still, even though the Batman didn't exactly scare me, it still gave me a lot more chills, I guess, than Doctor Strange ever did. But, the Batman has absolutely nothing on Doctor Strange when it comes to the gore and pushing that PG-13 rating. Oh my gosh, in this movie, people get sliced in half, eyeballs pop out, People's brains explode inside of their heads and people fall onto fence spikes. It is awesome and nothing like I ever expected from this movie. I am so, so glad they did not go the Morbius route or the Venom route of people's heads getting chomped off or their throats getting slashed, but there just being no blood at all. I mean, there isn't like gushing blood everywhere. It's still PG-13, but like... It's still pushing it. Wanda specifically does some crazy stuff with her powers that is just like kind of disturbing at times. But you know what? I love it. Now, once again, this isn't Mortal Kombat, okay? Wanda doesn't lift anyone up, break all the bones in their body, and then rip their intestines out of their throats or anything. But it's still really cool to see from a Marvel movie. Like, I know the Deadpool movies and Logan had blood and guts and stuff, but it didn't have blood and guts like people's bodies being unraveled or anything. Like, that's what this movie has, since they have a lot more magic and stuff. 
it has a lot more weird type of gore, but I'm all here for it. Now finally, for the horror section, we should probably put this on my horror movie tier list as the 75th movie. Alright, so I have it pulled up here, and if you want to hear me explaining why the certain movies that are in S tier are where they are, why the certain movies that are in L tier are where they are, then Make sure to watch my second channel video explaining this tier list as I'm not really going to do it here. And this does not include every horror movie I have ever seen. It doesn't include stuff like Get Out or Us or the original Hills Have Eyes, but it has the remake for some reason. That's kind of weird. I don't know why it has the remake, but not the original. And it doesn't have anything from after 2020, so no Halloween kills, which would probably go in F. Right next to the three other Halloween movies in that tier. But anyways, this is a Marvel movie. It all has to be relative. I like Marvel more than horror, so just logically, Doctor Strange is going to have to go in the S tier. Like, if we were going based off of how well it utilizes horror, then it would probably be, like, way down. But we're talking about enjoyment of the film. It's a Marvel movie. It's going to have to go in S tier. Now, I do not love it as much as It Chapter 1. I love that movie. Fourth favorite movie of all time. Like... I don't think there's any horror movie that's ever going to beat it. And then after that, there's Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. I don't know. It's a very special movie to me. Like, it's the first ever horror movie I've ever watched. It got me into the whole genre. Like, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Ghostface, Chucky, Leatherface, whatever. It got me into all of that. So I'm not sure I can put Doctor Strange above it. Saw 2... Yeah, I think I like it better than Saw 2. So that's where the movie goes on my tier list. Third favorite horror movie of all time. All right, now I'm going to stop talking about horror movies because every time I do, you guys absolutely hate me for it, which sucks because I love horror movies and I love talking about them and I want to make more videos about them, but I can't because every time I do, you guys send them into the nether realm. So I guess that's what the second channel is for. Go subscribe. Next up, let's talk about the characters in this movie. Let's get it out of the way first. The cameos were pretty cool. But like I said in my prediction video, keep your expectations low. Because even if there was a bunch of crazy cameos, if you keep your expectations low, you're going to be more surprised by them. Instead of you anticipating a lot and then, like, maybe getting something that's not as up to your expectations as you might want. But moving on to the actually important characters of the plot and story, Doctor Strange himself much more developed in this movie than he has been in any other movie, including his first one. I don't know, I think the first one kind of did a bad job entering him into the MCU because every movie after that, he has a completely different personality than how he was in the first movie because in the first movie, he was like super snarky and made a bunch of comedy quips and whatever. But then everything after that, he was like this super wise Doctor Strange, master of the mystic arts person. So I, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but with this movie, he continues to be Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts, while also feeling really human and really down to earth. And he is a very strong protagonist, and especially with all the multiverse stuff, Benedict Cumberbatch really gets to show his range with him playing a bunch of different versions of himself. Like for most of the movie, he of course plays normal Doctor Strange, and then there's the Defender Strange, which is pretty much just normal Doctor Strange, and then there's the evil, weird Doctor Strange with like the third eye, and then he just straight up plays a zombie. So yeah, Doctor Strange, super strong main character. America Chavez is a welcome addition. She is a new character, and she's pretty cool. She has an awesome looking power, and you know, Marvel's just been kind of on a roll with introducing these new characters and making them super likable. Wong is great, as always. Like, there's not really much of a super huge change in development or anything. He's just kind of Wong how he was before, but still great. And then you have the main villain of the movie, Wanda Scarlet Witch. She's a pretty great villain who is definitely strengthened by the fact that we have had this bond with her through WandaVision and the other Avengers movies and all that stuff. It's super good that we had all of that, especially since if you don't watch those movies, this one doesn't really make any sense. And then finally, you have Christine Palmer, who's better than how she was in the first movie, but I don't know why they keep trying to push her character. Like, she was in the first movie, and then she was in that episode of What If?, now she's in this one, and they keep trying to make her important, but she's just not that interesting of a character. And this is going to sound terrible, but she really only exists to make Doctor Strange a better character. Now, moving past the characters, who were overall pretty good, we have the story, which is a lot more of a mixed bag. Now, the movie is actually quite simple. Now, the, now the movie story is actually quite simple and easy to understand. 
But the problem is, is that it's very, very hard to follow because it goes very, very quick. And so you really don't understand anything until the very end of the movie when you're finally able to process everything and then you're just like, oh, that's what happened. Like it kind of just hits you once you see the credits and you're just like, Okay, I think I get it now. There weren't really any huge plot holes that I could make out while watching the movie. Maybe on repeat viewings I might be able to find more, but you know, people are probably going to pick this movie apart for plot holes because multiverse movie, Marvel movie, it's going to be picked apart, whatever. And that's pretty much it for the story. It's not really something you care all that much about. You mainly just care for the characters and stuff and the different cameos within the universes. And that's kind of what this story is meant to be, just kind of like getting us from one character to another and getting their stories in or whatever. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the individual character stories are more important than the overall story that encompasses the whole movie. Also, like with the cameos, keep your expectations low with the multiverse. There's only really one scene where there's just like a bunch of universe hopping all at once and then they just kind of appear in one universe and then they just kind of like stay there for a little bit. Then they go to a different universe and that's where they stay until they go back home. So really you only get a good sense of two universes, not including our own because I would expect you to have a good sense of that one. Also, this is like a little thing. This is just like the comic book fan of me getting like irritated by MCU. You already have a designated Marvel Universe number. You don't need to keep calling it 616 over and over again. You did it with Mysterio, but I excuse that because Mysterio was faking the whole universe, multiverse, whatever thing. But now it's pretty much canon that, oh, the MCU is 616. No, the comic universe is 616. MCU is like Earth 1999999 or whatever. We have an entire section of this video dedicated to Sam Raimi. Holy, this is a Sam Raimi movie through and through. The way the camera moves, the unique way the shots are composed and everything has meaning and it's just crazy. Like the original Spider-Man trilogy was just like a little sliver of what Sam Raimi can offer. And this movie is just like the rest of it. Sam Raimi just completely goes all out and I'm here for it and I love it so much. Like there's parts of this movie where a door will shut and the camera will move in on it and it straight up feels like something from Evil Dead. Like right from the beginning of this movie there's one of his classic camera movements where it's just like moving forward and like it's moving around and it's just so cool through the, like a universe that like is super different looking and it's it's so cool okay. Like you need to watch this movie just for the Sam Raimi camera movements and shots alone. And of course it can't be a Sam Raimi movie without Bruce Campbell cameoing in there somewhere. Now he doesn't play like anyone too major, he plays like some hot dog vendor, but it's still pretty cool even if he doesn't play like, I don't know, Ash or something. I wouldn't be surprised if he did though. Ash is just allowed to be in everything. That's not called Mortal Kombat 11. And the final thing that I want to talk about is the score, which was honestly very disappointing. Now it's not bad, but it's just kind of generic sounding. I really like Michael Giacchino's original Doctor Strange score, but it's not really used that much in this movie. And it's especially disappointing when comparing it to other comic book movie scores that have been coming out recently, like... Even though it's not a comic book movie. <sighs> and the most surprising thing is that this is coming from Danny Elfman. You know, the guy who made... What happened? Like, this could have had the potential to become an iconic Doctor Strange score, just like Spider-Man and Batman, but that just didn't happen. There are only really two notable pieces of music from this movie. One comes from like, I don't know, a scene where Doctor Strange is fighting another Doctor Strange with like, musical notes, which sounds really weird, but like, when you see it in the movie, you'll understand. And the other one was when a certain cameo popped up and a certain theme played from a certain 90s show, 
and it made my jaw drop to the floor. It is very rare that a movie ever makes me do that. Like, I think the only other time a movie has made my jaw drop to the floor is while watching Mortal Kombat and I saw Shinnok's amulet for the first time. That was crazy, but, like, it is so cool. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the score. Pretty disappointing overall, besides for that one little snippet. And the last words that I have to say about this movie are the post credit scenes. No spoilers, but, uh, I, I don't know. They're not really anything too cool. Like, the first one is just like, oh, I guess that's setting up Doctor Strange 3, which, if you're excited for that, you can be excited for that. But, like, nothing in the post credit scene really got me all that hyped up. And the second one... Unless you're just in for a good laugh, you probably just shouldn't stay and watch it. It's not that worth it. And that's all I have to say about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I definitely recommend that you go watch this movie. It's super weird. It's not going to be for everyone, but you should still give it a chance. I do expect a lot of people, specifically the people who are expecting lots of cameos and multiverse stuff to be disappointed and expecting more. But like I said, I kept my expectations low and I had a good time. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And now it is time for that surprise that I was telling you guys about. <sighs> Let me go put all this on. Hello again, Batman. This is the Riddler speaking and I've just escaped Arkham Asylum with a new best friend. During my time locked away, I thought up of a bunch of new riddles. So, I'm going to ask you three of my toughest ones now that I've escaped. Riddle number one. Most have two, some have one. But me and you, we have none. Take a guess. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that answer is incorrect. I'm afraid the real answer was parents. Better luck next time. And that next time is now, because we have the second riddle. If you are stupid, and please do not lie, what is the sum of ten and nine? Hmm, 19? I'm afraid that is the wrong answer. The right answer would be 21. Remember, I said, if you're stupid. <laughs> now for the last riddle. If quizzes are quizzical, then what are tests? I'm afraid that answer is wrong. The real answer would be test. Well, as you can see, I got a Riddler mask, and you know, looks pretty good. I mean, it's not exactly how it is in the movie, because of course, my facial structure is nowhere near the level of perfection that Paul Dano's is, but you know, it still looks pretty good. Uh, the glasses, I don't think, are completely 100% accurate. Uh, they're a little different. And also, for some reason, if you look at it in the reflection, like, it turns everything blue. I think these are, like, glasses for people who can't see screens very well. But, you know, whatever. It looks fine enough. And, uh, of course, you have the mask and the cling wrap. Uh, this mask did not come with cling wrap, so... I mean, we've had cling wrap here, so I just, like... You know. You know, now that I think about it, this is actually kind of accurate to how the Riddler actually is, you know. In the movie, he's just kind of, like... Some lame YouTuber. So that I think about it, actually gives me a really good idea. <sighs> I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I do not expect to be forgiven. I just want to apologize. This video is not edited, and it is not scripted in any way. It is purely from the heart. The accusations against me that I murdered the mayor commissioner, the district attorney, attempted to murder billionaire philanthropist Bruce Wayne, and also blew up seven vans along the city seawall, causing a massive citywide flood. All of those are true. I take full accountability for all of my actions, and I take full responsibility that I will fix this, and there are no excuses for what I've done. Now, with that being said, I don't want people to recognize, there are no excuses here, but I want people to see how 
the people that I murdered were all rich, white, corrupt, privileged scumbags who were working for infamous mob boss Carmine Falcone, who I also murdered. So at the end of the day, they all kind of deserved what came to them. And I also do not take any accountability for what happened at the Gotham Stadium. Those were all my fans' doings. They might have been dressed like me, but none of those were me. I was actually locked up in Arkham Asylum at the time, so I couldn't have been there. And yes, I did tell my fans to go and do this stuff, but I did not think they'd actually do it. So I cannot be held accountable for what they did. And to all my fans who are defending me, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for trying to support me, but don't. I deserve all the punishment that comes my way after my actions. Though it is not a rightful consequence of what I did, are threats upon my life. I have been receiving death threats. And by death threats, I mean someone with four followers on Twitter called me an incel. And I do not like that. His IP address, his bank details, and all of his personal information is in the description. Please go and harass him. And with that being said, I am having a merch sale. Link in the description. 50% off all items, which means prices are now down to only $89.99 per Riddler t-shirt. Get it now. It's a limited time offer. And also, one final thing, I'd like to shout out a really, really awesome YouTuber called The Uncommon Oddity. Go and subscribe to his channel because he's really great. He makes a lot of really cool content. Alright, that's pretty much it for this video. Goodbye! Yeah, what he said. Subscribe, or else this will be in your room tonight. I have absolutely no idea what's on the screen. I am 100% counting on editing me right now. But now that you are subscribed, right, make sure you have the notification bell turned on, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. And with that being said, that's it for this video, my fellow Waddies. I'll see you next time.